Hi, I'm Chris Somerville and I'm playing Jason McKenzie. Well, there's a few things I've always wanted to do in my career, and obviously I'm just at the start of it, but a couple of them were um, to be a James Bond baddie and to be a superhero. So I was absolutely thrilled to be offered the bar of Jason McKenzie, so I was very, very happy to come on board. I find the character of Jason McKenzie very interesting because a lot of the other sort of superheroes you see, like along the lines of Superman and different ones, they're all, they all have this very glamorous and happy and cheery side and save the world and I think Jason is just finding out who he is, he's just getting his feet. It's just the learn, it's the beginning of the character, I think there's a lot, lot in, in this character and a lot very far for him to go and he also has a very, very dark side. I think he's not, he's not the happiest person to be given what he has and to be able to use it, so I find that very interesting about him. Most of the people I've, I've been only once, I've only worked with Shane once and I've just worked with uh, Alexandra. Um, but it's been fantastic so far, everyone else that's on board has been a, it's a great bunch, it's not very often you find so many people actually getting along, usually it's uh, all divas, tantrums and tiaras, but um, this lot are really, really good. It was very well selected. I think there was, I think the character does have a lot, a lot in him that's, that could be addressed over a, a very measured amount of time. I think there's a lot of different avenues you could go along with him. I think there's a lot of different stories and a lot of different ideas that you could put forward the character. And I think he does have a very long license behind Jason. His challenge so far. I think it has to be the special effects, so apart from learning the lines today, which you, you'll never actually get to see. So, um, I think the special effects is a bit of a more strange one because you don't actually see what's there, so you're just trying to imagine what it actually looks like. So, you have to put it in your head and you're trying to work out what you're actually doing. So, you feel a little bit, a little bit thick, a little bit stupid, but um, you have to imagine it and get it done. Hopefully, I'm doing it justice. We shall see. It was fun. It was very fun. Very muddy. And, uh, I don't know if you can see my bruise. No? No? Alexandra? <laughs> wow, that woman's deadly with an electric rod, by the way. So if you ever meet her, run. Any sparks coming from her, run. Get out as fast as possible. But um, that was, it was. It was good to enjoy today very, very much. Can't wait for the next one. This is a big disgust thing, this one. I, as much as everyone would like to fly and fly about like Superman and going all around the place and sort of little Jason's got his electric thing going on and Batman as well. Batman is Batman. I've got to say, invisibility. Because they say knowledge is power. If you're invisible, you could learn a lot. You could learn very, very much about other people, other things what they get up to, and obviously there could be slight illegal avenues you could go down that one, but um, I think invisibility would have to be mine, you could have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, my name's Tam Toy and I play the evil Mr Phillips. My name's Sheehan Denethan and I play Amy. My name's Colin Ferguson and I play Detective Chief Inspector Sloan, Charles Sloan. My name's Stephen McEwen and I play D.I. Mullen. Hi, I'm Alexandra McKenzie and I'm in Night is Day, the internet drama series. I'm playing Miss Jones, who's um, extremely interesting and lots of fun. Uh, she's a baddie and has an electric rod and anyone that gets in her way, she just hits them with the electric rod. So she's, she's a lot of fun to play and I wouldn't advise you to get in her way. Uh, hello, my name is Mark Harvey. I am not 14 years old or any younger than that, as you should not assume in the first place. I am actually 22 years old and I am playing the part of THE Stevie, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a demanding role, acting like a uh, wuss. I've worked with Fraser Cool before, I worked with him on a film called The Recruit, and he's a very good, very talented young director. He's got some very good ideas, innovative, he's dynamic. He's got a lot of energy, he's always in the go. And the script he wrote for this, I thought was exceptional. And the minute I read it, I thought, oh, I've got to play this part. 
Well, it's all something quite new to me, really. I've not really um, heard a lot about the idea of sort of doing a web series before, and it's something I was quite interested in getting involved in. Um, I think the internet, obviously, is so popular now, actually, like the new medium, so it's really interesting to be working in that. Um, and the story itself, um, it's really exciting having the idea of a superhero in Scotland for the first time, really. Um, it just seemed uh, a good laugh, a good thing to do. Uh, I'd get introduced to Fraser um, over the internet a few months ago, well, in fact, probably about a year ago now, and um, just got involved in this project. He put a part in mind for me, and that was it. Well, I'd uh, been in contact with Fraser before uh, regarding uh, another project called The Journey that he was uh, trying to get off the ground and I spoke to him then and he, he sounded like a director who knew what he was doing and what he wanted and he had a, a decent a decent vision so when uh, he offered me the part for this after the audition I, I thought I'd jump at the chance to work with him. Well I, when I saw this advertised I was based in, in London although I'm kind of half based in, in London, Glasgow and I thought oh it's, it's kind of far away and it means going up and down from Glasgow but um, I just really liked the way it was described. It was kind of comic strip, it was kind of Doctor Who and it just sounded a lot of fun and very different from any characters I'd played before. Uh, since I have a lot of respect for Mr Cool uh, I thought I'd help him out with his project and he says that he can also help me out with a lot of number of projects and stuff. Uh, so yeah. There's never been a character like this portrayed not just in Glasgow but in Scotland before. The villains you see in any Scottish film or any Scottish TV show are well, they'd probably go for exaggerated realism, you know, this baseball cap and the trainers and the bling rings and stuff. But this guy's different. He's suave, he's sophisticated, he's intelligent, and he's very, very evil. I think she has a very interesting character. She's got a long way to go. Um, I think, certainly at the beginning, she's really quite naive. Um, she's very trusting. Um, but obviously through her experiences and through meeting Jason she really learns a lot about the world and so she's got some real changes to go through. He's quite a deep character. Um, he's lost his son. Um, he died and he's uh, obviously fighting those kind of demons in, in his head. Um, but he's, he's a kind of world-weary character. Tough guy who's seen it all before and done it all before. So that's quite a deep character. Well, uh, character I play, uh, Marlon, he's kind of aggressive and uh, has a lot of in inner anger, shall we say. But I think there's a little bit more to him than that. So uh, he seemed a wee bit complex. He's not just the, the thuggish uh, type cop uh, that he might appear as on screen. Later as the series develops, you might see a bit of a different side to him. So. I think I wanted to play someone who was, was bad. Uh, not that I am, of course. And someone who just had a bit of edge. And she's also quite childlike and playful and also because it's comic strip it's slightly removed from reality and I think it's much more fun to play something that's that's not real. Well because I think, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this actually, but it's because it is, I'm playing a number of characters uh, possibly, not I don't know if within Night's Day but through Fraser Cool's project apparently and I think that's quite challenging for being able to show what I can do. I can play a wimp one minute, I can play a, an assassin the next minute, or I can play something else, I don't know. The cast are wonderful. Emma Healy, she's a great young actress. She's funny, she's happy, she loves her work, you know. She, people are a joy to work with. Uh, the cast and crew from Fraser right down to the producer, Kim Ferry. Sound guy, light it. Everybody is a great generic group of people. Nice people, good to work with, and we're having fun. Yeah, everyone's really great. Really good people to work with. Um, it's good. They're all very professional, but sort of good to have a laugh with as well. So it's been lots of fun. Amateurs. No, I'm okay. <laughs> no, really good. Really high class. Um, everybody's really friendly. They all pull together. It's a great team. Um, they all know what they're doing. Yeah, no complaints there. Crew is fantastic, obviously. Uh, yeah, they're, they're really nice, really good to get on with. The guy that plays uh, Colin Ferguson, who plays uh, uh, DCI Sloan, got on very well with him. 
uh, and the rest of the cast. Still some of the cast I've not met yet, so I'm looking forward to doing that. But yeah, everybody's uh, friendly, good to work with, professional when it comes down to it. That's when they don't forget the lines too often. So. Um, I um, I've met um, Jason, who I think is fantastic. He's really good fun and great, absolutely great to work with. Um, he's, he's charming, he's delightful, and he's very good looking, of course. Um, so, yeah, I'm really enjoying um, working with Jason. And also the character Stevie, um, he's, he's great fun. He looks much younger than, than he is, um, but he's, he's great as well. Um, and really, really good fun and really hard working. And, yeah, really enjoying working with, with everyone. It's a great, great team. No, they're all good. They're uh, fantastic. I've just met uh, some of them. Uh, Chris, really nice guy, seems to fit in my clothes as well. Uh, so, which is also good. And uh, James, <laughs> we say. And <laughs> uh, no, everyone seriously. And Mark Riley, a uh, really nice guy. Met him before though. And no, they're all really good cast. I think uh, people are going to see more of his humour, perhaps, more of his uh, intellect, as his web of intrigue and his evil plans take hold. And it'll be good to see how he interacts with Chris Somerville's character, Jason McKenzie. Mm, well, I think um, it's going to have some very interesting turns, which I don't want to give too much away about, but um, there's a lot of places for it to go. Um, I mean, the characters go through so many journeys and the storyline really develops. And um, what I found very interesting is in the beginning, the first few episodes, I feel it's almost just setting setting the situation up. Um, and as they develop, you really get some interesting story turns that are really pretty gripping. Because I've not been involved in each of the episodes, it's kind of hard for me to, to, to be able to answer that. But um, obviously it's building to a crescendo, a big surprise at the end, hopefully. I see it developing really well. Uh, the storylines, uh, from what I've been told, of future episodes seem to uh, go in a place that I, I didn't think they would go based on the episodes we've shot so to me it's uh, it's going to develop uh, quite nicely so, and there's going to be a lot of surprises within the storyline and you know it's, it's starting to look really good in the finished article so yeah I can see it, see it doing really, really well. I think it would be lots of, I think we can see a lot of adventure and a lot of a lot of drama, um, a lot of violence, um, a lot of fun. Um, so there's there's real diversity in characters. We've got a really good age group, and we've got lots of different characters. We've got the goodies, we've got the baddies, um, but everyone's quite good fun uh, as well. So so yeah, I think the, there's lots of stories um, to be told there, and a great setting um, here in in Glasgow as well. The series developing uh, a bit more action really a bit more darker as i think usually is the key to almost everything but uh but no i see it getting a bit bigger i do actually see it getting a lot bigger as it's already getting a lot of attention and stuff so yeah i think it could actually be quite good well five minutes ago trying to get all those layers of makeup off after being beaten up was quite a challenge scrubbing away my skin but <laughs> but um i mean overall there's been Quite, quite a few challenges in um, developing it and the character Amy does go through a lot and um, I think the real challenge for her is just sort of getting to know herself really. Oh, um, I think it's more fun than challenging. I think I think the challenge is is to to lift it off the page because you're you're given a script and the script is really good. It's, it's really funny, um, it's dark, it's, it's entertaining, it's, it's got so many depth to it and I think it's just lifting that off the page and just making it making it look real and making it watchable and making it exciting and entertaining. On this project, yes. looking like, actually that's not a challenge at all to look 14 for me or anything like that. Uh, the biggest challenge so far, uh, I don't know, I just don't feel challenged. <laughs> yeah. Challenge me. <laughs> challenge me, damn you. No, um, the biggest challenge for me is probably kind of what I touched on earlier with uh, showing a different side to to D, uh, D. I. Mullen. You know, hopefully the audience can see that there's a bit more inside him, and you know, he's he's not just uh, 
the one dimensional character there is actually a bit more to him so I'd like uh, I'd, li I'd like to see that come to fruition and you see maybe a bit of a, a more gentle side to the guy uh, a bit more personality than just a uh, kind of tough cop style thing so yeah I suppose I do to a certain extent um... <sighs> I've not really suffered, not suffered any loss in my life to that extent, so I can't really empathise with that side, but that's just a case of acting it. Um, but yeah, I've probably got, got a lot of common with the guy. I don't take fools gladly, and neither does he, and uh, he's a kind of down to earth guy. Like, I'm down to earth. Um, probably a couple of years ago, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's an honest type guy. Um, he wants to do, do do the best job he can. Sometimes he might overexert himself uh, physically with uh, in terms of suspects and how he treats them. But, you know, that's just the type of person he is. He just wants to get a result as soon as possible. So, you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of good qualities. You know, he's maybe a bit too aggressive at times. But, you know, that's, that's probably really his only fault. It's going great. We've had two scenes we've just done there. It's absolutely brilliant. Natalie, one of the new characters who plays Joanne, the charity worker, she's very talented, very attractive, nice girl, great bubbly personality. So I'm enjoying it. I'm loving every second of it so far. Episode three? Episode two. Episode two. And um, that was fine. I was only in a small part of episode two. Um, just sort of one scene at the end, which went fine. And how's episode three going? <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, episode three, it's going really well. Um, it's all pretty good. Very well. It's cold. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's going well. Yeah, enjoyed it. Episode four from, from what we filmed uh, today seems to be going really well. Oh, probably hypnotism. I'd like to be able to hypnotise any woman and make them fall for me. Mm, I think it would have to be the power to control other people's minds because you could do a lot with that. Uh, be able to see through the uh, walls and stuff, X-ray vision, I call it. Oh, I'd have to be the know, bar crypt and there's not really much that can touch him and he can see through anything really, so I'm sure that would be a benefit. Hmm, I think. I'd like the power to see into the future, I think. not necessarily far into the future, but I think a few hours or, or the next day so that you could change something that's, that's going to be wrong to change it for good, I think would be my, my superpower. Invisibility. Totally, totally got to be invisible. I mean, it just it's right there, it's right there. <laughs> That'd be class. Thank you very much. That's all right. Sorry.